Welcome to IST Presents. I'm Chippy Buenafe. Agriculture has been an important sector of the Philippine economy. In fact, the government agency responsible for supporting agriculture was formed more than 120 years ago. And yet, high costs of input, lack of capital, labor concerns, lack of post-harvest systems, are among the issues that have continued to plague this sector. Is there anything that information can do, technology can do to help address these issues? Our guest today hopes to shed some light into this matter. Jeff Barrero is an entrepreneur, a husband, and a father of five. He is involved in a few businesses ranging from advertising and promotions to food, both in Manila and in Jakarta. What keeps him extremely busy these days is the impact-driven social enterprise agri-tech agri startup Mayani.ph, where he is both founder and executive chairman. Jeff, welcome to our show. Hello, Chippy. It's good to be here. Okay, great. So, yeah, just to set things up, um, can you give us a, a, a a bit of a background of what Miami is, and what was your motivation for setting that up? Um, all right, uh, let me answer that question this way. Because just yesterday, I was having a conversation with my wife, who is uh, originally from Bacola, Negros Occidental. Um, she was telling me of this story, of this, this hard working guy from up there in San Carlos where there are a lot of farms and uh, ECQ days or lockdown days have been very hard on farms. So what this guy was doing was he was trying to gather produce from all the upland farmers so that it could be sold because not uh, everything was on lockdown. It was very hard to get produce to market. He has this seed, this fruit. Uh, those of you who are from, uh, from Maholod will know it. It's called patuan. Patuan. It, it's, a, it's an ingredient that you use to make uh, dishes sour. So he makes that what, three hour or probably four hour trip from the, from the mountains to where he can sell it as some kind of a magsakan. Cost of the product, about 23 pesos per kit per kilo. Okay. Upon reaching a uh, market, selling price, 24 pesos. Whoa. Mm -hmm. One peso. I mean, how can you live on that? And that story replicate that in every part of the country experienced by thousands of farmers, not just on lockdown days, but that is the ordinary life experienced by our small farmers. And this is the kind of situation that really drove me to think, how come it's still this way, generation after generation? And like you mentioned earlier in your intro, what, 120 years, and yet the problems remain the same. So at some point, I was thinking something probably could be, should be done. The, the, the situation is ripe for, for disruption, as, our, uh, as many tech startups uh, mm. love to say. We have mm. to disrupt the way things are done. And so I started uh, exploring the idea of getting farmer's produce in a more efficient way to market that was fair to our farmers. Because the irony is that the farmers produce the food that nourishes us, and yet they remain marginalized, poor. So uh, we thought uh, this can't go on. No. So that, if you were asking me about uh, the motivation, that was it. But to get the process going, uh, I actually approached someone from uh, from your school, from UANP, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Ronnie uh, D. D. Yes. 
and to get some information, I shared with him and with his team this idea of mind connecting farmers to consumers, farm to table. And uh, he and his uh, team were the ones who, who told, told me it, it's a worthy mission, it's a worthy cause, but it's going to be tough to pull off. Uh, we have thousands of small farmers, uh, when it, especially when it comes to uh, vegetables. Uh, of course, you have to consider how many small farmers they are, how fragmented they are, uh, the nature of the produce itself, it's fresh. Some are leafy vegetables, which, can, uh, which are perishable. But uh, we came out of that meeting feeling that it can still happen. There is still a way. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's, that's basically how it began. I gathered some young guys to join me in this venture. Mm. Um, we each had our own area of expertise. Mm -hmm. And then that, that was the beginning of my end. Yeah. So, in, in effect, uh, the problem that you were trying to solve was that perennial issue wherein the farmers don't really get much upside from selling their produce downstream, right? Um, and what makes your solution, your, your approach to this problem any different from, from those who've tried perhaps to, to address it in the past? Or, or hasn't been, or has, has, has this been ignored for, for quite some time already? I mean, what, what are your thoughts about that? You know, it's a puzzle uh, why it has remained this way for, for generations. And, uh, you know, that, that problem of uh, the farmer staying poor breeds other problems, right? Because the children of the farmers see how hard life is and how it keeps them in poverty. So they don't want to be farmers anymore. Mm -hmm. So if these people don't want to be farmers anymore, what happens to our food supply? If these farmers or children of farmers don't want to be farmers anymore, what do they do? They go to the city. They leave the countryside. So it also contributes to massive urban migration, clogs the cities. So it really gives rise to other problems when you don't take care of the farm. So um, how is our solution any better? We've simplified it. We are like the single middleman of sorts, mm -hmm. wherein it's farmer, Mayani, consumer. Mm -hmm. Simplified. Farmer gets fair price. Mm -hmm. We will have no stories of a farmer coming to Mayani telling us, okay, it's 23 pesos cost, and I'll, tell him, I'll buy the 24. No mm -hmm. way. We buy at fair price. In fact, the process is we don't dictate the price to them right now. In Miami. We ask them how much is your produce. Mm -hmm. And then they tell us how much. And then we price it competitively. And then we put it up in the platform, the Miami.bh platform. And basically, that's it. We have simplified the process. Uh, you were mentioning earlier that when you were starting Miami, you had to gather um, a lot of people to help you help you start up, um, consulting with some experts in the agribusiness space. What were the challenges that you were faced with when you were ramping it up? Well, ramping it up in ECQ period is different from the, <laughs> the challenges of starting the mm -hmm. ent enterprise itself. Uh, so, in starting the business itself, uh, we found it efficiently. We piloted it by going with a group of farmers in Western Batangas. Because we thought that if we pilot it and we do it right, then several other farmers will join that association. And then we keep selling their produce efficiently. You know, I, I had a, I visited one time uh, 
these farmers. And I was having a, a casual conversation with them. I was asking them, so what's the, what's the part about being a farmer that you love most? And then they were telling me, you know, I'm a native to this land. Planting comes naturally to me. It was done by my father. I grew up in, in the land. Lumaki ako sa lupa, kinasabi nila. So, uh, it's natural. They, they love farming. They love to plant. They love harvesting. They love produce. Especially produce that's grown organically without pesticides, without chemicals. And then I asked them the opposite question. So, what's the, what's the terrible part? What's uh, of farming? And it was a common sentiment. The hard part or the sad part of farming, getting our produce to market. Because that's when the heartbreaking happens. That they work so hard, they love planting, that they like what they harvest, and then they can only sell it so much. Mm -hmm. So, if we do it the Miami way with this group of farmers in Western Batangas, they're only preoccupation would be planting, planting well, and harvesting, and Miami takes care of everything. Now, how wonderful a model is that for a farm? Something close to his heart, something he loves doing, with the, with the, with the commerce of it removed from his hands. And then, so imagine the scene wherein the children of this farmer see that, oh, okay, so I just think keep planting. No more headache of being negotiated to death. <laughs> so we want to see that virtuous cycle wherein the next generation will see. It's not that hard. In fact, it's wonderful. I can stay here. I can be with family. This can be an ongoing enterprise. I will want to keep the land productive, uh, fertile. How wonderful would that be? Not just for that family, but for our nation, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and while I, I suppose your, your, your motivation is really to help the farmers, um, could you explain a little bit um, in, in broad, uh, broad strokes how Miami still operates as a business? I, I'd like to think you're still earning money from it, right? <laughs> uh, lockdown days have been crazy. Uh, for example, the number of orders we processed from the time we, we launched Miami.ph in May of 2019 up to December of 2019, the volume of orders during that time, during one month of lockdown, has matched the May to December 2019. The demand has just skyrocketed. And you were asking me, sorry, you were asking me earlier about um, the, the challenges of ramping up. Yes. It has been very difficult. We, we have to be resourceful because, you know, the movement is very <laughs> limited. And no matter what, what people are saying that, you know, food uh, supply should go unhampered, on the ground, it's, it's tough. Uh, you encounter checkpoints in the city, you encounter checkpoints in the countryside, um, you encounter checkpoints who are fearful if they hear of somebody who is sick in this town, so they won't let you in. But, uh, but we've had to be hardworking and resourceful, um, reaching out to those who could help, uh, please provide us the necessary passes. Uh, but along the way, the, the motivation is, for example, we were forced to ramp up uh, how many percent, maybe 400 uh, percent during lockdown period. We had to increase the number of our riders. The riders who would bring the produce direct to homes, right? At the same time, there were several riders from 
uh, the likes of uh, Grant and Cass probably, who had lost their jobs. So we were able to absorb uh, these people and provide them some uh, steady income. So in that way, yes, we were we were able to ramp up. We were even the, on the farmer side. A lot of them were also having a hard time getting their produce out there because they, their movement was hampered. So when the Miami van would reach Western Batangas, our regular farmers, we'd expand our uh, radius of farmers we were reaching out to, and they were thankful. And they were wondering, how come you were able to get here? Mm -hmm. It was just sheer perseverance, determination <laughs> to find more produce. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so yes, it has been difficult. We had to, because once the produce gets to our hub, we have to be more efficient, we need more space. So, yes, it's a, it's a constant, uh, it's a daily thing to face the challenges of ramping. Mm -hmm. um, in the area of agriculture right now, um, obviously Miami uh, is somewhat symbolic of the potential for further innovation in that space. What are some other areas that you foresee that could be sources of innovation in agriculture? There are of, uh, startups in the Philippines, uh, and they're all doing their own thing. For example, Miami.ph, uh, let me get back to your earlier question, uh, give you broad mm -hmm. strokes yeah. of uh, what Miami is. So it's basically a platform, an e-commerce platform, where people can buy fresh veggies from our local farmers directly. So we facilitate the whole process up to the point where a household, a family, or even a restaurant, if they are open again, or a commercial kitchen, wherein they receive the produce, the fresh produce, direct from farmers we know, local farmers, to their doorstep. So that's the Miami model. Uh, but there are other agri-tech startups who are into using technology to improve yield, for example, or to predict harvests. One of the harvest and at what time. So if uh, these innovations in agriculture, even even fintech innovations are, are going to be useful if people come together. If, For example, we're working with a, a fintech right now mm -hmm. who's very much involved with um, remittances from uh, OFWs, Overseas Filipino Workers. We work together, we use their platform, we use the Miami platform, we use the Miami connection to fresh produce to, from local farmers so that the families of these OFWs get produce uh, with the payment facilitated by the FinTech. So innovations are, are happening every day. Um, there is another uh, startup who also focuses on OFWs and who put up uh, a portal. It's like a, it's like a massive grocery. It's like a, a Walmart or an SM. Mm. And uh, we've tied up with them so that it's not just a mass of frozen food or clothes, etc. There's fresh produce there. Mm -hmm. um, several, several uh, things are happening. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing there is, uh, there, there is a challenge if we are dealing with older farmers. They're, they're not very tech savvy. Mm. They just want to plant, just want to harvest. But the younger ones are. Mm. Their children are. They're okay doing Excel spreadsheets to, mm. to predict or to tell us the, the coming harvest. They're okay... Uh, going to the Miami website, mm -hmm. they're okay using an app. So uh, as the innovations come in, the efficiencies, the quality of the produce, the matching of the harvest 
uh, together with an actual demand. These are all going to be more, more beautiful, more efficient, and, and wonderful for everyone in, in, in agriculture, in food supply. Um, well, uh, do you expect more people to actually join with you in this endeavor? Maybe not as as part of Miami, but perhaps potential competitors. Do you, do you see more and more people become more um, interested in coming up with such similar enterprises for agriculture? It would be great if uh, other people ventured into into this area. Because what we're after really is drastically changing the food supply chain. If, if more of us can get produce directly from farmers to tables, then that's good for the farmers. That's why, well, well this is a big dream of ours, that eventually Miami will go nationwide. Mm -hmm. that we will have farmers from the Visayas serving Visayas households, Visayas commercial kitchens, Visayas restaurants, or even Manila. Uh, so the, the pilot model will work. Mm -hmm. uh, we will expand from Western Vis Visayas. In fact, we're now getting produce from Camarines Norte. Mm -hmm. We're getting produce from Benguet. Uh, and, and people... The citizens, the people of the city also, they do want to get produce from our farmers. And they want to help our farmers. We're mounting a, a, a massive campaign now. Farmers from Camarines Norte are about to harvest thousands of kilos of pineapples. And... They don't know how to get it to market. They don't know how to sell it. They are already facing the prospect of just dumping their pineapples, letting it rot. But we work with another agri-tech startup mm -hmm. who is consolidating such massive harvest but and, and helping in our own way as an e-commerce platform to reach the end consumers. So this is happening. Mm -hmm. And this doesn't have to happen just on lockdown days. This is a new way of doing things. Mm -hmm. So if uh, people get more involved in agri, in agri-tech, agri-business, in uh, agricultural productivity, in uh, organizing farmers, then all good for our country. Well, it's great to know that there's still hope for, for the agriculture sector and even for our farmers. Well, Surely there is. Yeah, well, thank you, Jeff, for sharing us with your thoughts today. Sure. Thanks, JP. That's Jeff Barrero of Miami.ph. If you have any feedback about our show, please email us at ist at uap.asia. I'm Chippy Buenafe and thanks for tuning in.